Gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Almost 24 hours of coverage after 114 speakers and 42 panels. Ura, ura! We reached the last panel of this conference. And what's the best way to uh, to signal the closure of a Greek Economic Summit? but a discussion with the Minister of Finance. Welcome to our conference, Mr. Minister. Thank you for the invitation. I was bombarded with questions, especially following the discussion we had two, year, two weeks ago in the tax forum. I'm bombarded with questions by friends uh, and partners. Yes, we, we do have a, a, a discussion every two weeks. Yes, we may be misunderstood, says Mr. Bakatselos. These last days were excellent for Greece, especially abroad. You come from Eurogroup group. Could you please set uh, the landscape? What happened in that Eurogroup? What's the news you bring us? It was an excellent uh, tribune for Greek economy within and abroad. Uh, domestically, the first data on the growth rate of the third quarter of 2021 were published, which were excellent, extremely encouraging for Greek economy and society, which means that our estimates, uh, the growth rates of 6.9% this year are not only realistic, they may be even proved conservative. And most probably, the preconditions are laid for even further development, not recovery, a real growth over the next years. At the same time, the figures giving the comparison, the benchmarking of Greece with other countries are far better. And unemployment is continuously shrinking. Unemployment is rising. We have reached levels of 2010-2011. These are extremely positive figures domestically. All that effort of the society and the government through reforms has been acknowledged abroad as well. It has been acknowledged in the Eurogroup from the statements of all EU institutional bodies, all the statements related with an extremely successful 12th review of the Greek economy. The head of the Eurogroup publicly stated that by the European Commission, uh, Mr. Gentiloni, in the press conference, acknowledged publicly by the head of the IMF, Mada Georgieva, and yesterday uh, acknowledged by the current, the new uh, German Chancellor. Therefore, Greece gets more self-confidence and claims more space within and outside. At last, at last, some good news for our country. This is to be, this is um, to be uh, credited to all factors, the society and the government. Whatever you've asked me should be the springboard for further and more intensive work through a completed cohesive plan that had the opportunity in previous meetings of ours to unfold even in, in titles and snapshots, which prove that we are at the right track so as to create a continuous growth, create new good jobs and enhance social cohesion. Mr. Minister. Since we're talking about Europe, do you believe that Europe can make a big step towards uh, integration when it comes to economic and fiscal policy issues? And allow me to ask you one more question, which is very topical. The question may seem rather early since the relevant agreement is very, very recent. So what is your view regarding the updating of the new rules for VAT rates? It is something very new. We know that. Okay. Let me make clear that Europe has shown and has proven during the last two years that it learns from its mistakes, from its errors, and that it tries to boost integration. That is why all the discussions that are taking place and will continue to take place will focus on that topic. I'm talking about Eurogroup and ECOFIN. 
that uh, will be held in 2022 and uh, will also talk about uh, the new fiscal framework that aims at uh, fiscal stability and fiscal flexibility at the same time. All these have to do also with the banking union, something that was first mentioned in 2014 during the presidency of Greece, but hasn't been completed yet. It has also to do with the capital markets union, so as to increase uh, liquidity in enterprises. So all these are requirements that Europe has set for 2022. And all the things I have mentioned prove that uh, Europe wishes to deepen the integration. In that context, yesterday, after a laborious effort of four years, we ended up in a compromise. It is widely acceptable that all these decisions uh, are often the result of compromises uh, between the different member states so as to have a common framework with regard to VAT and the taxation of uh, certain products. The country won to the extent it could what it was looking for, be it some tax rates for specific geographical regions of the country that had been questioned in the previous years, or primary sector, or even residences. So we do have the possibility to proceed to specific initiatives in that same direction. However, I want to be very clear. when we will make the move, how we will make the move, and uh, on which sectors we will focus uh, will depend first on the available fiscal space and uh, secondly on the priorities that will be set by the Greek government uh, under the guidance of the Prime Minister because you know very well that we have some other open fronts uh, regarding taxes like the unified tax rates uh, when it comes to the solidarity contribution or the social contributions in general. In certain cases uh, in Greece, there are already certain exceptions when it comes to real estate. And in Greece, there are reduced uh, tax rates uh, for certain islands, uh, islands that now enjoy these uh, lower tax rates, not on the basis of the quotas or the number of refugees living there, but uh, depending on the existing of a specific infrastructure and facilities on these islands. So now five islands of the country enjoy lower taxation rates. So the direction that uh, we are following uh, aims at reducing tax rates. And I repeat that this will take time, effort and realism. Thank you very much. You past the torch. You spoke of banks, uh, companies. What is envisioned for funding SMEs? A great percentage of these SMEs may be in problem with the amassed debts uh, and the red loans, both to the state and the banks. Therefore, we should broaden the perimeter of those companies that might and can be funded. Where can they be funded from? From many different sources, which we believe that can be appear over the next immediate future. Of course, the most important such source remains the banking system in Greece. We are a so-called bank-based country. But uh, the tapping or the flow of resources from uh, more affluent uh, to weak economies takes place through the banking system. Our responsibility of the state is through incentives, through the reduction of taxation, through the extrajudicial settlements, and these are such kind of mechanisms, to broaden the basis of bankable companies. This we do through the onset of implementation of uh, the law on a second chance uh, that is to be implemented. Therefore, a part of these companies will be able to become green again, which was uh, red, that is, in the red. We do it through the reduction of taxes and social security contributions. Therefore, we create the appropriate framework to entrepreneurship so as to have a funding capacities, and we'll do it through the incentives for companies to become bigger, that is, to have cooperation so as to become more 
robust and have an easy access to the banking system. And indirectly, we also do it by reducing the red loans in banks' portfolios. The more we enhance the management of assets and liabilities by the increase of deposits and reduction of NPLs, we broaden the capacity of banks to finance real economy. And we will also do that through the RRF. You know it very well that the RRF has earmarked 12.7 uh, uh, billion euros will be loans, loans to be granted to all size companies that will be for the real economy. But here lies uh, the, here finishes the liability of the state. That is, some responsibility must be assumed by entrepreneurship and the banking system. Therefore, they must lose, must use all the systems and degrees of liberty, so as for banks also to contribute, despite the disruptions of the past, to find sources of funding, both companies that is and banks. Thank you. So let us resume now and go, come back to Greek economy. According to the situation to date, we will attain very high growth rates, even higher than the ones were expected. And same applies for next year projections. To what extent can this uh, high growth rate be sustainable after 2022? Well, your query is uh, to the point because it doesn't suffice to have high growth rates for some time. They must also be sustainable. Actually, they must be also in smart and green. Therefore, our country must attain the so-called productive restructuring. That means uh, that in the basic constituents of wealth created, it must obviously increase, boost uh, consumption, but at higher rates uh, should boost uh, exports and investments. So therefore, to your question, to what extent is that feasible, data figures, not to our figures of the Ministry of Finance, but of the European Commission that were published two weeks ago, corroborate that. The country will attain growth, uh, uh, investment growth rates over the next two years of 15 to 16 percent, which is the second biggest rate in Europe, when the EU average will be 5 percent. And in exports, we'll have each year, until including 2023, 8 percent increase, where the EU average will be null. Therefore, the data published by the European Commission prove that the country maintains what you said, to have a sustainable development, not merely a strong one. Additionally, we see continuously uh, FDI coming but from both sides of the Atlantic. We see them inflowing in Greece, creating new jobs. Many of these companies and investments, that is, were presented here in your conference. At the same time, we pursue implementing policies and reforms so as to enhance these branches what we will be securing the longevity of uh, public finances and development. I will give you indicatively, we have a national plan for exports. This national plan includes 458 actions for all the time period that we have been and still are in a health crisis Enterprise Greece continued helping exporters and was close to exporters uh, virtually. Here, as Ministry of Finance, we create a more uh, friendly environment to entrepreneurship, taxes, social security contributions. So we continue moving ahead towards that direction because we believe, it is our firm belief, that we must move towards uh, the change of the production paradigm and the restructuring. Yes, I must stress the role of uh, Enterprise Greece and we have an excellent cooperation with Enterprise Greece as a chamber. This year, our conference had a particularity. Beyond uh, the foreign-speaking channel, because we broadcast both uh, Greek and English, we also had a channel broadcasting in science language. So this year, we had as main theme redefining uh, development towards a sustainable and 
inclusive future. That's why I mentioned the sign language, inclusive future. As a Minister of Finance, what uh, are the main parameters and prerequisites to, all of you, to your view so as to attain that? You know, this inclusive has a lot of different interpretations and dimensions. It is without exclusions, with regard persons with special, particular, excellent skills. It also has to do with uh, weaker households that will have to be assisted by the Greek state. It has to do with the uh, overall uh, social policy. This government has proven that it does have a specific social policy. All our actions, so all our actions have this sign as well. I must indicatively tell you that we have a national plan for all those categories of cat, uh, compatriots with special skills. And this is coordinated centrally by the Minister of State. Let me just say that only recently, in the very small margin, fiscal margin that we found, for this year we have a special uh, allowance for this category of compatriots. And the same up we did for low pensioners. So I get the other dimension. Within, amidst this uh, energy crisis, we earmark a series, we introduced a series of actions for broadening allowances for heating uh, purposes. So for all this part, uh, to have an inclusive development. Furthermore, in these uh, many and different taxes that we reduced, we also reduced the special levies and taxes for tools, organs, or even medication for some categories of citizens. And this lower taxation rate will be pursued over the next years. Therefore, we try to grasp and view a little bit different dimensions of what you defined as a development without exclusion and inclusive growth. And I consider that in a balanced policy, we, we try to have high financial uh, efficacy and a great social response. I can see that we are running out of time, unfortunately. And I don't want to end this discussion uh, by talking about taxes. You can take more time if you want, don't you? No, no, no. I'm. Uh, not in that position. So the Ministry of Economy has also the Special Secretariat for the Management of Private Debt, which is also linked with a special network for the financing of education. Our chamber recently, in an event about this topic, had talked about the need to design and implement a national strategy for the financial illiteracy which is one of the best way to increase the financial knowledge that our citizens hold. Would you like to say a few words about the pillars of uh, this cooperation and this strategy? First of all, I would like to clarify that uh, the problem is illiteracy, and we want to make our fellow citizens literate. So what we are striving for is under the coordination of the Special Secretary of Private Debt to create the necessary circumstances along with uh, the global fora like the OECD to, in order to enhance uh, literacy. And it is evident that uh, with you, the Chamber, we have and will continue to have a very smooth cooperation that will allow us to reach our objectives. The pillar of our actions is, of course, knowledge. Knowledge that will allow more rational decisions, financial decisions that may entail some risk, but they always entail the high yield notion. Financial decisions which need to be characterized by financial effectiveness and social retribution. So in this dialogue that we have started and that we need to enhance even further, we are willing as Ministry of Finance and Economy to cooperate in order to get the best possible results by strengthening the digital and financial literacy in Greece. Thank you very much. I thank you. Thank you very much for being with us once again.
And this is the best, the best way to conclude our conference. Thank you very much for the invitation. I am happy to have discussions with you on a regular basis because you give me the opportunity to unfold the plan that the Ministry of Finance and Economy is implementing so that jointly with you and the society, we can get the best for our country. Thank you very much.